Hi there, my name is Dr. Seema Shah Fairbank, and in this video we will cover how to calculate normal depth based on uniform flow conditions. After watching this video, you'll be able to define uniform flow and normal depth and calculate normal depth, dn, for open channels. As a review, in open channel hydraulics, elevation is determined from the datum to the bed or bottom of the channel. The slope between points one and two is referred to as the bed slope, S naught. Next, you'll need the flow depth. This is measured as the depth above the bed. The slope of the water surface that is generated is also known as the hydraulic grade line. Finally, the velocity head is defined as the velocity squared divided by two times gravity. The slope is referred to as the friction slope and is also known as the energy grade line, or EGL. Note that the friction slope is essential in open channel hydraulics. The actual water surface, which may or may not be normal depth, is determined based on the friction slope. To determine the depth of flow, one will use the Manning's equation. The Manning's equation states that velocity is equal to phi divided by roughness times hydraulic radius to the two-thirds power multiplied by friction slope to the half power. Since flow rate is equal to velocity times cross-sectional area, the flow is equal to phi divided by roughness times cross-sectional area times the hydraulic radius to the two-thirds power, all multiplied by the friction slope to the one-half power. Note that V is the velocity and Q is the flow rate. That area is the cross-sectional area and, H, and RH is the hydraulic radius, which is cross-sectional area divided by wetted perimeter. The Manning's roughness, or N, has been determined through field and laboratory testing. There are many different sources that have been published about roughness values for open channel hydraulics. The best known source in open channel hydraulics has been Venti, Venti Chow in 1959. However, over the years, the US Army Corps of Engineers has published values for open channel hydraulics as shown in this graph. These can be found in the Army Corps' HECRAS reference manual. When trying to determine normal depth, it is helpful to remember that flow is uniform within the channel. This means there's a constant flow within the channel spatially, resulting in a constant depth within the channel as shown in the graph. For normal depth to occur, the, flow must, the following must be true. First, the channel needs to be long. This is the case because over a long distance, the flow within a channel will try and reach normal depth as long as nothing obstructs or causes a change to the flow. Second, the channel must be prismatic. This means that the overall geometry of the channel is constant with no natural changes. Ideally, we think of a rectangle, a triangular, or a trapezoidal or circular cross section. Third, the flow must be uniform. And finally, the flow must be steady which in addition to the flow not changing in space, steady states that the flow does not change in time. When all this is true, the bed slope is equal to the water surface slope, which is equal to the friction slope. And the Manning's equation can be rewritten by changing the friction slope, which is impossible to measure, with the bed slope as shown. The flow is equal to V divided by roughness times the cross-sectional area times the hydraulic radius to the two-thirds power and the bed slope to the one-half power. The normal depth is embedded in the area and hydraulic radius. <clears throat> this following example will help illustrate the point. Calculate the normal depth 
for a channel that has a slope of 0.1%, a Manning's roughness of 0.03, a flow rate of 250 CFS. The geometry of the cross section is trapezoidal with a width of 5 feet and side slopes of 3 to 1. This should bring us back to remembering the Manning's equation. We can plug in the area and perimeter into this equation. For a trapezoidal channel, the cross-sectional area A is equal to the base width plus the side slopes times the depth and the entire quantity times the depth. The perimeter is equal to the base width plus 2 times the depth times the square root of 1 plus the side slopes squared. By taking these and substituting them directly into the Manning's equation and substituting the terms from the problem statement, we will have 250 cubic feet per second is equal to 1.49 divided by a roughness of 0.03 multiplied by the area, which includes the base width and the side slopes. However, the depth is replaced with the normal depth, which is unknown to the 5 thirds power and the wetted perimeter and divided by the wetted perimeter, which includes again the base width of 5 feet and the side slopes of 3. However, the normal depth is not known to the two-thirds power, and the slope of 0.001 to the one half to the half power. With the normal depth embedded in the equation, the best way to solve this is using goal seek within Excel. But if you want to solve it by hand, you will need to use the bisection rule. First, let's assume dn is three. We would calculate a flow rate of 96 cfs, which is not equal to 250. Next, we would try a dn of 5 feet, and the flow rate resulting would be 307 CFS, which is not equal to 250. Now we would pick halfway between 4 feet, which is bisecting the, the depth, results a flow rate of 183. We repeat this until we reach a dn of 4.58 feet, and a flow rate of 250 CFS. We hope this example in this lesson will help your further understanding of uniform flow and normal depth.